that buses in so-called special students. These are inner, inner city students with all kinds of uh, learning disorders and so on. Basically, it's a question of discipline. They're, they're bright, they're capable, but they've been in an environment that never supported them, <coughs> both in their families and in the schools that they attended. Lou Ann Johnson is a real person, and she was a public school teacher for many years, and this film is based on Lou Ann Johnson's book, My Posse Don't Do Homework. I'll say it again, My Posse Don't Do Homework. So I see you smiling up there, but you know where this is coming from, you know, the language of a subculture. Uh, and, and incidentally, I didn't know that she was real until today, when there was this piece on this um, jacket for the tape where it, I could see Lou Ann Johnson's name, but I could not read what it was associated with. The print is so small, and I didn't have a magnifier. So I went to IMDB just before class and discovered what I just told you. So I think that's really kind of cool. My posse don't do homework. And Lou Ann Johnson herself <laughs> is a little bit different as an individual, and uh, because it's based on Ms. Johnson's book, it's so, sort of like self-reflective on her as a real person. And this scene, depending on where the tape settled when I stopped it, is a shot of a hallway or it is a shot of the principal. It's just sort of the tape slides a little bit. And <clears throat> She has just met with the principal who's reprimanded her for uh, taking the students to an amusement park without signed permissions. And Ms. Johnson paid for all of it. She didn't ask the student to pay for the rides, and they went and had a wonderful time. I'm assuming, because I don't remember whether the film really says this, I think this is based in Los Angeles, and that's the feeling I get. Uh, and I could research that, I just didn't happen to do it. And you're going to hear, uh, Johnson's voiceover, who's saying, quote, Angela, would you read the first line? Now, I'm going to pause this in a couple of places. Now, take this as a real situation, and take it yourself as representing Lou Ann Johnson faced with a classroom of these types of students. The premise going into it is that she believes in them. And she, she has come at this time which is an hour, uh, a little over an hour into the film, uh, has come to know them and believes in them as individuals. Now watch what she does, assessing it based on what we understand about expectancy theory up to this point. <clears throat> okay, here we go, Aaron. Did she reward the winners with an extrinsic reward? She delivered what she promised, didn't she? She said, I'll take the winning group at my expense to the Flowering Peach restaurant. She did that. Did it appear that those four students valued that win? Yeah, now this is acting, of course. So the director is saying, give us an exuberant response. But if it is based on Louie and Johnson's writing, then apparently she experienced this with her own classes and this particular group. Now, she went one step further. I'd like your reaction to it. What was the next step that she took? She rewarded everybody. She said, that all the rest can come up and pick out of the box. Do you think there is a problem with that? Next time they're going to expect all the rewards? Say it, I couldn't hear it. Next time they'll all expect to be rewarded? That's part of it, but it's a, a little bit, it's a little bit more subtle, and we haven't talked about this part yet, but go ahead. Okay. We'll, we'll 
come to an answer to my question deliberately after the break, but I have one more question for you. Remember that we distinguish between extrinsic and intrinsic rewards or extrinsic and intrinsic outcomes. It is clear that the extrinsic outcome here is the reward box. I mean, uh, the flowering peach uh, thing. Did the winning group, or when they were working in the library, did you sense that any of them were experiencing intrinsic rewards from while doing the task of finding the correct answer about the poem. I want to see if you understand intrinsic rewards. I will assert to you that there was cinematic evidence of intrinsic rewards. Yes. She came from a place to herself when she figured out the right answer. Okay. Yeah, that's it. You could see the the uh, Kelly, I guess is her name, the one with the, the braids, or dreadlocks, I guess is what they are. She goes through getting the answer, and then everybody, you know, the guys laying on the table and so on, and they all say, hey, yeah, that sounds really good. Now, that's an extrinsic reward to her. But then she makes an expression where she basically tells them to shut up so that they don't give the answer away to all the other people, and she's got a big smile on her face. She feels really good about herself of solving that complex problem, something those students had never done in their academic career up to that point. Okay. Now let's take a break. I'm going to have to drink some water, and we'll see how we, get, we go when we come back. My throat is really bothering me. And... Uh, Let's uh, go do that, and we'll pick it up with equity theory. Uh. 